Craft here with Motion VFX, and in this tutorial, we're going to look at the Captions Expansion Pack, and this is just one of the expansions that work nicely with M Tracker 3D. So here I am inside of Final Cut, and what am I talking about with these expansion packs? If you head over to your titles and generators, M Tracker 3D Expansions, we have a Captions Pack, there's a Pointers Pack, and there's a Titles Pack. But as I mentioned a moment ago, we're gonna focus on the captions pack in this tutorial. And if we look, there are actually 50 captions that are included. Scrubbing the mouse over these captions, you can see some animations. They animate in and they animate out. So various styles, various animations, various types of typography. We're gonna use one of these right here in a moment. But before doing that, I want to look at my footage. I want to break it up into the parts where I want to track the footage using M Tracker 3D. And something else with this footage that you see right here. I'm going to put some text right around here, and we really don't have a lot of detail from this footage. Now, M Tracker tracks just fine the way it is, and if we're missing some of that detail, maybe I want to see more asphalt here in the street or something like that. Well, let me show you what I'm talking about. Maybe I want to start tracking right around here, so I'm going to do a blade cut there, and maybe I want to animate the text out right around there. So this footage right here is what I want to track. But before I actually track the footage, let's see if we can get a little bit more detail in this, which will improve our track even better. So one thing we can do in our effects browser, I'm going to type in contrast. Of course, make sure I select all, and let's drag this crisp contrast onto it. If we check and uncheck that, that does add a little bit more detail to the road. It even adds details to the buildings, the walls, etc. Now something else we can do to enhance the detail, let's go to our color board, and we can fine tune these sliders for the exposure, and maybe we can dial in a little bit more detail. Let's cut that on and off. And in this case, we're probably just fine with sticking with the color board. But now that we do have more detail in our street here, let's go ahead and go to M Tracker 3D in your effects browser. And let's take that and drag it onto this footage. Let's go ahead and track. This four second track took about two minutes on my 2018 MacBook Pro. And now that we have that track, we can disable the color board or whatever detail we had. And again, we only use that just to get more detail, which ultimately helps our track. Now I'm gonna copy this track, head back to the titles and generators, M Tracker 3D expansions, I'm gonna go with caption 48. Now we're not gonna paste this track yet onto this caption. I'm gonna make sure I go ahead and trim it to where I want it. So notice I am making this the length of that region that I've blade cut earlier. And now that we have the caption where we want it, Heading up to the title inspector, let's paste that track. This takes just a few seconds. Click on OK. With the playhead anywhere in that region, I have the caption selected. Let's pick a location. I'm going to try somewhere right here, kind of in the middle. Now this is obviously way too big, no big deal. We can adjust the content scale. Now something to note about the content scale. When you scale this down, your objects are gonna be brighter, and when you scale it up, they're gonna go slightly darker. We can adjust those settings further with the lights that I'll show you right here in a moment. But with that said, I am going to lower this content scale. Let's try 20%. I'm gonna uncheck show hints so I have more real estate to see. And I don't need this little 3D gizmo anymore, so I'm checking on that blue target. Now, I actually like the location of this, but I do not want to mess with reflections on this, so we can scroll on down. For reflections, let's disable it. We do want to see shadows, and I'm going to knock this opacity all the way up for a moment. So right now with the way it's set up, it's almost as if the light is shining directly from the camera almost because we can see the shadows behind the text. Let's go mess with some of these light settings. Let's rotate the light. And what I'm doing here is putting it somewhat parallel to this reference point, this light pole shadow over here. So I'm adjusting that rotation to where we're somewhat parallel with that. Now you can see here that it did make our text darker because now the light is essentially behind the text. Let's just bump up the ambient light color. And something I wanna go ahead and check are the shadows. As I scrub the playhead, I wanna see if these shadows are pretty much staying still. Now obviously they're gonna move there when it animates in and out. Now I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna disable those two settings just momentarily. Scrub the playhead again. And it looks like the shadows are moving just a little bit. Some points of reference that I'm using here, if you look at the double yellow lines, or if you look at the distance from the shadow to this white line, we can see we do have a little bit of shadow movement. 
So a couple of ways that we can fix that. One thing I want to check out is the content position. And I'm going to move this slightly back in the scene. We can always adjust the scale to compensate for this. Let's scrub the playhead again. And something else we can also do is we can change the location of this 3D gizmo. We can hold shift to ignore the orientation. So technically we are moving it up closer here. Let's reduce the scale. Let's check out the shadows now. Some points of reference. I'm looking at this white line on the road and I'm looking at right there. We can see it barely sticking out from that shadow. And I'm gonna send this stuff back over here and I'm gonna pick one more spot. Checking those shadows one more time. And using this white line with that A, we can barely see that white line on the inside of the A. And as I scrub this, that white line pretty much does stay right inside of that A. So I think this is a good spot. Let's rotate this a little bit, just to straighten it up a little bit. I'm happy with that. Since we did change the location here and we did a little bit of rotation, wouldn't hurt to go back and adjust that light just a little bit. And now let's fine tune these shadows a little bit more. I'm gonna change the color. Using the color picker, I'm going to match this shadow over here of this light pole. Now with the shadow opacity up at 100%, completely non-transparent. I'm gonna set this down to maybe 99.5. Let's try 99. And basically I'm just looking to see if I can see a little bit of that white line right there. Obviously if we lower this down, we can make it completely transparent, but we definitely don't want that here. Let's soften the shadows up. And now I'm ready to change my text. We actually have two pieces to this. We have a title and a subtitle. Notice when I press enter, we do go to a new line. And maybe for I love this city, we can spread it out or bring them closer together. And I think I want to adjust the Y position of the subtitle, maybe bring it up some as well. And notice as we do this, we are changing the shadows as well. I'm okay with the white title, but I want to change the subtitle color. Grabbing the color picker again, let's get one of these dark colors over here. Let's take all of this content and let's rotate it. So content rotation, rotating on the Y, just to make it face the camera a little bit more. Don't need these colors anymore. And let me check my shadows one more time. Shadows still look pretty darn good. Check out this reference point right here. That little white spot from that white line on the road, it's pretty much staying right there on this side of that shadow. Fantastic. So other adjustments. I want you to check out this light wrap. Now when I check this, you may notice it's not that big of a difference. Well, you will really see the difference is on dark text right here, for example. If I uncheck it, we can see pretty much we have a flat color here, but with the light wrap, it does add an ever so subtle glow. And obviously we can adjust these settings to make it more or less. Maybe this text is a little bit too crisp. We can blur that down here with Gaussian blur. Obviously that's way too much. Maybe just an ever so slight bit of noise. We can definitely see it on those darker letters. I'm gonna lower that down. Just to kind of match, I guess you could say, the graininess of the asphalt. One thing we can also check out as well with the lights, this light angle, I did not mess with this earlier. But if I set this up to 90, I want you to almost think about it as if the sun was directly above this text, so the shadow's shining straight down. Whereas if we lower this, I guess a way you could think about this is where the sun maybe is just coming over the horizon versus it being directly above the text. So somewhere in here is pretty good. And again, just keeping these references in mind over here. And just with those few adjustments using the M Tracker 3D title inspector, I think I've got the look that I want. And something to bear in mind, maybe you may find this more helpful, but selecting the actual text itself, you can actually use the text inspector in Final Cut Pro to actually make these adjustments as well. But since we were tweaking shadows and all that stuff, hey, why not just stay inside of here? But with all that said, let's have one more look at that final effect. For more tutorials on M Tracker 3D and even more plugins for Apple Motion and Final Cut, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And again, my name is B Craft. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.